Broadcasting live. It's America's longest running talk show on computers. It's Computer America. Bringing you the biggest names in technology with guest interviews, new products, and your emails. Listen live at ComputerAmerica.com on any device around the world. Email the show at live at ComputerAmerica.com or find us on social media. Be sure to check out our website for contests, giveaways, show notes, live video stream, podcasts, and more. You're listening to Computer America. Hello and welcome everyone into the Computer America Show. We are the nation's longest running, nationally syndicated radio talk show on computers and technology. Everyone, welcome into the program. Today on the show, we have the one, the only, Mr. Nathan Evans. If you haven't heard of him, where have you been all of our lives? Everyone, popzara.com is where you'll find everything uh, that we're going to be talking about to some extent because they are a nice eclectic mix of everything from books, movies, pop culture, anime, games. They really do run the gamut of you know just about anything to keep you entertained and i can't think of a better guest to head into the weekend with than nathan evans he is managing editor once again uh, so everyone before we get started computeramerica.com that's where you'll we'll find everything that we do including show notes archives video podcasts social media links contest giveaways and more computeramerica.com finally back up after a nice little hiatus uh, as it was migrating between two clouds so everyone uh let's see i'm Oh, okay, so um, right before I bring Nathan on, and then uh, definitely uh, Nathan can chime in here, but I wanted to say this just from the get-go. Uh, obviously, there's <laughs> there's been a big, massive decision as far as politics go, but Computer America has, uh, in the past, as is tradition and going into the future, tried to remain apolitical because, let's face it, I, I truly do believe Computer America is at its best when we talk about uh, stupid apps for smartphones. We talk about computers. We talk about why Mac is better than OS. You know, you know uh, why Mac is better than Windows. We do our best when we talk about, you know, uh, just to see some of the stories, how a Japanese uh, contract worker lost, or you know, for a couple of hours, lost all of the. Uh, personal information of every Japanese resident in a large part of Japan. That's where Computer America really thrives. So we're going to try to keep it there, stay you know straight, you know straight, narrow, and focused. Although I will admit, our segments with Nathan are anything but straight, narrow, and focused. But we are going to keep it technology focused and game focused and fun. So everyone, let's go ahead, bring them on, and yeah, we'll go ahead and, and get the show started with Nathan Evans. Nathan, welcome back onto the program. <laughs> Hey, Ben, what's going on? Uh, thank you for bringing up the uh, huge elephant in the room, the 500-pound gorilla sitting in the elevator. Of course. Uh, unavoidable. And I, I think you and I discussed this briefly before the show started. Um, I just want to clarify that I know, at least with Pop Zara, we consciously, very consciously avoid politics as much as we can. That doesn't mean we don't like politics. That doesn't mean we don't have political opinions. Of course we do. And it's not to say we forbid anybody from talking about them. It's just that a good journalist understands objectivity and resists the inclination to be an activist in service of what they're covering. Mm -hmm. And you are a technology site for the most part. You're a, techno a news technology thing. And one, if we go to any I'm not going to name any, but if you go to any technology website today, it doesn't look like a technology website. It looks like something else. And I get this. I understand the, the, I understand the inclination to do that. Farming the but outrage I think it, is definitely uh, very lucrative for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, again, depending on, regardless how you fall on the issue, um, there are people today that are going to politicize it and in a way that's very profitable for them. Um, whereas we, as technology and, and pop culture people, there's other stuff going on in the world. And it's not like someone turned on the bat signal and all of a sudden now we have to stop what we're doing. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, what, what's the thing on the Obi-Wan show? Uh, order 666 or Order 66? Oh, yeah, or, it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't even know anybody. You could tell I watched the show. But it's like, there's other stuff in the world. There's other stuff. And right now, in lieu of that, I think you need those distractions. You need to understand that the world is bigger than yourself. And sometimes you just want to talk about a dumb little phone or a <laughs> streaming show or something. And We're, anybody who doesn't allow you that escape, 
I would say question your loyalty to them. We're, we're definitely going to do that. And let's go ahead and, you know, kind of jump right into these. So you sent over a couple. Yeah. I picked out a couple that really caught my eye today. And yeah, I wanted to kind of start with, you know, maybe a little bit of the older news first, because we talked about this going into, uh, you know, going into last month. And now we can kind of look back and see uh, how correct you were. And by the way, proud to say very correct you were, Nathan. Top Gun Maverick <laughs> came out, you know, kind oh, wow. of, uh, or was about to come out to rave reviews, critical reviews, that kind of thing. Looking back, Top Gun Maverick follow up. Uh, yeah, that thing blew everything out of oh. the water. Uh, literally, I'll just say this. You guys dodged a bullet because I actually talked about that movie a day before I saw it. Had I seen the movie when we talked, you would have hated me because it would have been nothing. Top Gun. It would have been all Top Gun raving about Top Gun. Top Gun's so great. I want to marry Top Gun. Mm-hmm. And because it really is something special. Um, my, my movie editors hate me for this because they've all seen it. and They all love it, too. But it's like I, I, I try to examine things outside of just it being a movie and thought to myself, well, why is OK? There were two stories. Why did Top Gun do so good? And why did something like Lightyear do, do so poorly? And depending on again, depending on your politics, you have you definitely have the, the answer for it. But I don't think any of them are right. I think it's the matter of the fact is you go into something like Top Gun, uh, a, a legacy sequel that nobody really expected to become the biggest movie of the year. And it does. And yeah. then you, but you have to examine the movie for what it is. The movie would have done great had it made, what, $120 million the first weekend or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then it would have dropped. If you look at every other movie that came out this year, if you look at most Marvel movies, most blockbuster movies, they come out, they make all the money the first weekend, and they drop off a cliff. If you look at Top Gun, I, I love studying box office. Um, yeah. Box office pro, box office mojo, all that. Go look up the resources. Owned by Amazon, by the way. Um, you actually look at what they call precipitous drops. You look at you look at ancillary evidence like uh, cinema score. You look at audience ratings. Everybody just looks at Rotten Tomatoes and says, "Oh, this movie is so good." But no, you have to look at it it's like, "Well, what did this movie? How did this movie connect?" And the answer is, you have this movie that's unabashedly positive. You have this movie that is that has all the diversity that people want, has all the inclusion people want, has all the legacy people want, has all the nostalgia people want. It has everything that people want, but it has something else. The French say je ne sais quoi. I don't know what it is, but it has something that really connected with people in a way that I think surprised them. And the only, the only, Ben, the only other thing this year that I can say did this similar thing yeah. would be in the video game world. It'd be Elden Ring. Yeah. You have this, you have a sequel that nobody expected to become the biggest thing of the year. By the way, the only game that ever outsold Call of Duty was Elden Ring. That's never happened before. You have Maverick coming out. The, it it bested the Marvel movies. Yeah. Like there's oh, still a it, chance. It's, Thor- it, it's almost yeah. going to get a billion, almost a billion. Oh, it's going to it's going to surpass a billion. And and you could say Tom Cruise, you can say whatever, you could say all these things. You could you could look for its disparate parts and say this is the reason, this is the reason why. It's just a good movie. Yeah. And it didn't shove itself in your face. It didn't lecture you. It made you cheer. I told you well, when we were in the theater, it, it was one of those moments where people were actually standing up and like literally cheering for a movie. That never happens. And when it happens, it's you almost feel like, okay, uh, Chris Evans grabs Thor's hammer. Spider-Man says something funny. Like something happens on the expected scenes, but Top Gun? Yeah. Really? And then yeah. you have to think to yourself, oh, that's right. Top Gun was one of the top 10 movies of the 80s. <laughs> like it really was. I forgot. People yeah. like this series. Well, hey, but no, and, it's, um, and, and, and being able yeah. to uh, kind of recapture that uh, decades later and the fact that you know, hey, let's face it. Um, it 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 came out at the something about that mix. It came out the right time, the right movie, the right you know plot and everything like that. Everything just really hit, and I'm glad for Tom Cruise that it you know kind of worked because I think he like needs said, the, he needs the money. Positive, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. He I'm needs sure he the does. money and the work. Um, I'm sure he does. Say, mm-hmm. Final thoughts, though. Um, you and I have talked about the death of theaters before, and I told you from the very beginning, theaters are going nowhere. Theaters mm-hmm. are back, baby, and. This is a movie that the theaters require. Like you go see Top Gun, you could see it on your phone. You can watch this movie on your phone at some point. I'm sure you can watch it on your monitor. That's fine. But you go see it in the theater. It's optimal. This it is tailor made for the big screen. It is tailor made for the sound system. It is tailor made for an audience 
that is right next to you cheering. Like this is why people love the theaters. One of my and, friends, you know, who is a huge Top Gun fan, and he was super excited. Like probably the most excited out of my friend group to see it. He's like, and he told us after the fact, after he saw, it, he's like, you have to do the IMAX 8K whatever full, you know, the, <laughs> yes, the, the thirty dollar tick, you know, the thirty dollar tick. He he was uh, he said that that was the best movie he'd seen in theaters uh, in a long, long time. The only other, the only other pop culture thing that I've seen even close to this would be something I, we're going to get into it later would be like the return of stranger things where it's not advertising at that point. Like you can advertise till the cows come home and no one will care. But when you have organic advertising, you need a product that people like. People like the fourth season of stranger things. They've right. latched onto it in a way they haven't the previous two and it's, it's resonated. And when you look at Top Gun, you have people, you have movie directors talking about it. You have fans talking about it. You don't need to pay anybody to like your movie. They like it just fine. And I think we've gotten so comfortable with expecting Marvel movies and expecting superhero movies to be dominant that when something like this comes out and it does, it sort of restores your faith in what's possible. And again, and I just want to caution Disney's Lightyear didn't do any of that. And I saw Lightyear. It's a perfectly fine movie. It's not great. It's not memorable. I'll never see it again. It's one of the worst Pixar movies, which <laughs> is to say it's still a pretty good animated movie. But it, it, it plays it safe. It does all the opposite things that like Top Gun does. And the results speak for themselves. Like it's not when, when a I movie saw theater, that they, yeah. they, they had a, a cute likable cat as like uh, almost as big as Lightyear himself like to advertise the movie I'm like eh, yeah you know, well clearly can I say this Buzz uh, Lightyear couldn't couldn't carry it by himself yeah go I ahead. do have to defend Lightyear though uh, is there a gay kiss in the movie yes does it matter it really doesn't it it has no concept on the movie if that's why you're afraid of the movie don't be afraid for that reason um, does Chris Evans replace Tim Allen it's a different character. It's mm-hmm. not the same character. It's, right. He didn't replace anybody. I do blame Disney for doing a piss poor job of not letting people know that. It did, they did their, their reticence and their, I'll just say this, Disney is obnoxious. They did <laughs> make it seem like Chris Evans was replacing Tim Allen for political reasons. They did make it seem that way. Right. That's not the case. It's a different character. Um, right. Yeah, it's a, but, but Lightyear is not interesting enough to talk about. Yep. Like, I don't want to talk about Lightyear. It's not. Inter- it's not that. It's just. Then, then let's not yeah. and move on to something that is movie adjacent. Woo! And you mentioned Str- Stranger Things, but uh, more so the parent company Netflix. This is something that you know we've kind of mentioned on the show that Netflix has confirmed they're doing an ad tier supported uh, or an ad supported tier in their offerings. And you know, so many people like they really. Uh, you know, they they read this and they were like, Netflix is getting ads. And everyone collectively said, the Netflix is dead to me. And, you know, that's not really what he's been promising. He's been promising, uh, you know, I, I'm honestly surprised that this hadn't come out before. Uh, you know, and I haven't really read this particular article, but from what I can understand, there's going to be a tier below their already inflated, let's face it, Netflix is one of the highest in the industry. There's going to be a tier below that you pay three, four dollars for, get ads, and then you can watch everything that Netflix has. It's not that they're throwing a sprinkling of ads in every yeah. tier category. No, they're just bringing the the cost floor down with the help of ads. In, in, am I Which right is, in that? That's that's the only choice possible. I mean, the only other alternative would be like what Paramount Plus does. Paramount Plus, which has come out of nowhere to become like a phenomenon, by the way. Mm-hmm. Can we just say this? Um, if you love Star Trek, there you go. Yeah. But I'll say this. Um, they offer an ad tier service with ads. They offer non-ad service, just like Hulu. Um, Disney, I don't think... Does Disney offer it yet? Or they're getting they, they, the they have said it is coming later in the year that they will bring out an ad-supported tier. But when I watch Paramount Plus, because I did snag the yearly thing, uh, mm-hmm. I had to do some Star Trek research. Um, they have ads even on the non-ad range, but it's an ad for themselves. Mm-hmm. So like, I'll watch, it, I'll watch an episode of like Deep Space Nine, and I'll see an advertisement for another show on the service. Right. I can deal with that. I can, I don't want it, but I can deal with it. Right. But it's but if I saw an ad for like Colgate, I'd be a little upset. Right. But it's not it's not as bad as um Crackle used to be or any mm-hmm. of that crap. You know, yeah. where you see the same ad, 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 ad. Right. I did um I was ta- I was talking to our friend Herman this morning about Hulu. Um I tried to go to I tried to switch all my streaming services to yearly payments so I don't have to deal with it. Usually right. get a, a little money saving. So I switched my Hulu to yearly and it turns out they don't have a yearly non-ad service. You have to pay ads. Really? So, 
So you get the discount, but it, it switches to ad service. So if you like being interrupted every three minutes, yeah, there you that's go. strange. Yeah, and yeah. and I, I think another service that does that really uh, poorly is YouTube. And you know, it, it's almost to the point where the lowest or even the free version of most services they are so ad supported that it almost yeah. like annoys you. It, it, it it's almost like you know they're hitting you in the head constantly, like uh, pay for the service, pay for the service, pay for the service, pay for the like you know the 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 lowest tier paid service is bearable, but the free service is unbearable to the point where they try to pester you to make money. Like they almost use the the ads as a bat. But still, I as far as Netflix is concerned, uh, if anyone has been paying attention to finances and stock price and that kind of thing, Nathan, I got to say, watching Netflix melt down from like six hundred a share down to two hundred dollars a share uh, was a oh. huge blow up, and that was uh, honestly surprising. It was. Yeah. I don't think it was surprising at all. It I was looked surprising at their, I look- to me because it's like investors, like for the first time, they lost subscribers, and everyone's like, "Oh my god." constant expansion and forever growth is not sustainable uh, and but that's I don't think why they, it was surprising to me they didn't expand um they didn't expand uh vertically they expanded horizontally right for example i mean how many fucking shows can you have about serial killers how many shows do you need about serial killers or true crime or this or that right and and i said and by the way i said fudging because we're talking about cakes yes they how many shows can you have about serial killers and cakes and 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 Bring politics back into here for a second. Like, it's one thing to say we're not political. Netflix goes all in. Like, they know, they'll hire very famous, like, for example, like, if you're into liberal comedy, they'll have tons of liberal com- comedians. They'll hire other people, too. But the ones they'll promote are definitely geared towards political. And it came to a head. I think the, I think the thing that finally set people off was the Dave Chappelle fiasco. Yeah. When, when Dave Chappelle had his comedy special, which, again, you saw with Ricky Gervais when he had his special, mm-hmm. Netflix had enough. Netflix had enough. They said, we're, we're done. We're no more political stuff here anymore. We're not going to support this anymore. And they took a stand that some people um, thought maybe a little transphobic. But at the end of the day, though, tolerance means we tolerate all things, not just what you like. And you, you, I don't think they had Michelle and Barack Obama do programs. They had the, the Harry and the Meghan do programs. They have all this stuff. And if you were to to cite it on one on one side, you'd see the political spectrum is is pretty weighted on one side. Same with all their fi- like how many late night show have they attempted with late night comedians? They all come from one perspective, and nobody watches any of this stuff. And it's not because it's not funny. I I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't watched a second of it, just like anybody else. But why would I need to go to Netflix to get the same content I can get everywhere else? If I want to get funny liberal comedians, I don't need Netflix for that. I have NPR. I have CBS, NBC, and and honestly, uh, it, 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 think, it, it's oh hard, my goodness. It, and I was gonna say, it's hard for me to believe that Netflix wouldn't make these. Uh, you know, this is why Netflix was the number one for so long. It, it's not only were mm-hmm. they the first and innovators, but they they dug into data like no one else. So Nathan, no, yes. to, your, to your question, I'm like. They had to have seen the numbers at some point, and and they hide a lot of it. They keep it close to the you know close to the vest, and sometimes they do things just because they kind of expect a payoff later. Like they know the numbers are bad, but they you know kind of keep with it. But like a part of me just thinks, you know, why are they doing that, Nathan? It's because I, know, I don't think they have the numbers. I th- I, I think their data is corrupt. I'll think? tell you right now. I think their data is oh absolutely. I don't see any evidence. For, for them to invest in this. For example, you have a show like Cowboy Bebop, where they invest $100 million. They, they, they produce this show, they advertise the show. Then you start looking at the ancillary signs. You say, well, how come they're not advertising it here and here? Why is the advertising only limited? They put the show on, mm-hmm. they cancel the show within two, two weeks. What type of an investment is that? If, if you ran a pizza place like that, you'd go out of business in a week. Netflix is throwing so much money, I think under some regime, under some... <laughs> misguided effort to go into some demographic they greenlit five billion dollars worth of content and they are now reaping the rewards that nobody wanted the content nathan i think that's your answer is that you know if you ran a pizza place like that uh yeah they're gonna ruin some pizzas and i think a hundred million dollars that's a big pizza but that's just a pizza and a five billion dollar you know kind of batch of pizzas um exactly they're they're gonna throw it out and they're gonna try something you know hopefully something better the, the power of Netflix was that they could they had so much money, they would greenlight everything, mm-hmm. every weird, wacky thing you can. 
But you've noticed, if you paid attention, that, that they've weeded their own garden where it became less and less and less and became more about certain, certain things. If you go on a website and you look up uh, ankle socks, mm-hmm. okay, and, and Amazon says, you looked up ankle socks. Oh, you must love ankle socks. Here's ankle socks. Every day, ankle socks. Ben, have you seen today's ankle socks? You get pretty damn sick of ankle socks because just because you look up something today doesn't mean that's all you want. If I'm on Netflix and I look up uh, a serial killer show just to see what all the hubbub is about, that doesn't mean I want all serial killers. Like That's what they do. They've, They've gone all in. The metrics are all skewed. And you have something like, again, Paramount Plus, for example, you have uh, a, one of the biggest shows on TV being this Yellowstone show or this, what is that, 1883 oh. or something. It's yeah. phenomenon. And now people are talking about, oh, it's Return to Cowboys. No, it's the same thing as Top Gun Maverick. It's that how do you measure a metric when there's no data to support it? Tell me on your data of superhero blockbusters where the hell jet pilots come in. <laughs> You don't have any data because no one's watched Jet Pilots. American but now, machismo. I saw what's that? Uh, there's um there's a, a a mockbuster movie company called The Asylum. They produce yeah. crappy mockbusters. They have a movie out now called Top Gunner. You know they have transmorphers. <laughs> they do a better job of putting their finger on the pulse. The Netflix twisters, is doing. yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Transmorphers. You know, way of the worlds. It's just, but you, we laugh at but Sharknado hit, mm-hmm. you know, hit something. Sharknado was nothing but the algorithm messing up. That's all it was. Like, what do we do? We'll just, I don't know, tornadoes and sharks. Like, yeah. and it worked. So, so, it's just, it's so crazy. all of that, so all of that aside, uh, getting back to Netflix and then we'll jump over to another topic because, um, you know, we have a ton of them. I will say that, um, as far as like who's going to serve ads, because you know it's also a question of is Netflix going to get their own contract? No, it looks like they're thinking either Google or NBC Universal are going to be the top two, uh, you know, potential advertisers on Netflix. So it would be interesting we'll see. To, to see if if NBC gets it, because then NBC is advertising uh, potentially Peacock, their streaming service, and exactly. you know, on Netflix. So. We'll see what happens. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of potential there, and I'm okay with an ad-supported network, by the way. Mm-hmm. If you want to pay for ads, I mean, if you don't want to pay and you want to get ads, I think that's perfectly plausible. I think it right. brings the price down. But at the same point, though, the alternative is keep raising your rate every month to pay for their failures, and that's a problem. Like that, Netflix has a problem with failure. This is a problem, and right. we're, we'll see how they we'll see how they do it. I really, I wouldn't even try to offer them advice other than diversify your portfolio. There you go. But that's just me. Yeah. Uh, and, and okay. All that aside. Now I do have, let's see. Um, I do have that. Yay. That? Well, that's I a windows that. update and the windows update, by the way, jumping topic is windows 8.1 will begin warning. It's few remaining users that January, 2023 update cutoff. So for the few people out there that are still using Windows 8.1, which Nathan, if I recall, when Windows 10 came out, the the users of Windows 8.1 were like in the single digits. Like it, it was like um, a third or a fifth of what Windows 7 was when Windows 10 I came out. I will say this. That's a very good point. I want to bring up another point. Windows 8.1 is not Windows 8. Can we be clear about this? Correct. 8.1 was supposed to be the fix that fixed a lot of the problems, and it did. It made Windows 8 pretty usable compared to 8. However, it required a different serial number. Did you know this? The update was so substantial that there were people who, remember, they were promised the free upgrade to Windows 10 or whatever. They couldn't upgrade if they were on Windows 8 because Microsoft did not make the 8.0 ISOs available or updates. So if you, had a, if you had a serial number for Windows 8, there was no way of upgrading your machine. You had to physically call Microsoft and get them to trade you into an 8.1 password. And even then there was trouble, not password, a uh, serial number. Like, man, I haven't thought about Windows 8.1 in a long time. And hopefully a lot of people are with you as well. Let's see. I'm trying to see where on the, uh, let's see. So Windows is 75% of the market. I'm trying to see like a breakdown of uh, desktop OS market share, like the exact percentage of what we're looking at here. Sure. Take all my cookies. I don't care. Um, You know, most sites don't even track them anymore. I'll be honest with you. Most sites don't even differentiate between like eight and 8.1 and things like that. So. 
Windows hmm. 8, Windows 8 though, or RT or whatever you want to call it, you know, with, there was different versions of it, you know, that, right. that where voice well, the people. RT was like the, the, the stripped down version for mobile tablets and stuff like was, that. And it was, never but the, good. but the overview, yeah. but the interface replaced Windows 7 was the same. It was, you were going to force you onto an app store. It was going to, I think for RT it was ARM only or mobile only versions that were lower powered. Um, I think we had something similar happen with Windows 10 S. Right. Or some abbreviated version, but no, this was Microsoft at their worst and least creative. It was we need an app store, we need to tabletize your experience, and they said, you know what, we will make your Windows eight look like a tablet. Mm-hmm. We will make you use an app store, and we don't care that it's on our strength. Apple's doing it. We got to copy Apple. We got to yeah. copy Android. We got to do this. They really Didn't tried work. to do something with Windows 8 and 8.1 that they might have accomplished with like Windows 11, which was, and obviously they still have the Windows phone at this point, they wanted one operating system that you could seamlessly transition between a phone, a tablet, a desktop, all of it was going to look the same, but luckily the desktop stayed the desktop and you know Microsoft was admittedly wrong on this one. Well, By the way, found the numbers, Windows 8.1 to all 3.06 and respectively, 1.36 Windows 8 users. So yeah, there are still some Windows well, 8, not Windows 8.1. Um, this is like they're all this is like end. when they found this is like when they found that Japanese guy on the island 30 years after World War II, yeah. and he's keeping the flame alive. He's like, mm-hmm. I'll never give in, Banzai. This is what it's like. Like there's somebody out there still using this. And yeah. I'll say that, but I'll say that, or like Windows. Uh, we didn't even talk about Internet Explorer being killed off. Finally, uh, well, like we, well I, I mean, like we reported like eight times, so it's hard to tell like when the official one was. So, I mean, every time you think it's dead, they they give it more life. But yeah. that's because that's that that's just a reminder of the stranglehold that Windows used to have on this world, not just the 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 computer world, where mm-hmm. they were so integrated into like defense systems with the military yeah, oh, yeah. and U-Haul trucks that they couldn't just take it out. It was it was intrinsically entangled in there and it really made me wonder how outdated the u.s war systems are if they require <laughs> internet explorer like you know, microsoft I'm, doesn't even trust it yeah th- there there's a lot going on with um, speaking of not getting political with russia and ukraine and i gotta say one of the most uh interesting parts of that whole conflict you know to me is hearing about all of the stories coming out uh about russia and uh old tanks old military equipment old this old that and you know the more that uh western countries start to limit the supply of like chips and microprocessors to russia it's like you know and i honestly don't believe that the american military is you know we're probably a little more updated but to your point nathan military equipment doesn't really need to be changed like you know there there's still somewhere like those you know uh eight inch floppies i'm sure that have nuclear codes on them it's it's you know i'm sure that it's just out there because if it works you don't need to fix it it's just after 30 years someone looks at it and goes that's really old we need to change that uh well, but then it becomes very hard meme. to do that it's a meme on every movie you watch with the nuclear war there's always that outdated bunker with the old reel-to-reel tape machines mm-hmm. like this is this is how outdated the infrastructure is i mean i mean Happens we have roads that yeah. we have roads that crack when it gets hot we just paste over them and i think that's what the, i think that's what this whole internet explorer saga revealed about the u.s military is that they were just like they would spend a hundred million dollars a year having to update Windows XP, and like because it re- it it was still tied to win- uh, Internet Explorer. That's insane. Uh, right. By the way, speaking of Russia and Ukraine, uh, little kudos to all my old Windows XP buddies. If you had Windows XP any time in the last twenty years, and let's just say you didn't get it legally, you learned a little Russian to make that happen, <laughs> because that's that's how it used to be. Like yeah. you learned a little Russian. I forget the words I learned now, but you know, you dabble in the pirate world and you're going to, you're going to have a little Bolshoi Pavida, you yeah. know, in your life. So, uh, so I have no idea what that means, but we're going to go ahead and transition that. That was supposed to be just a quick little update for yeah. Windows users uh, out there, uh, pirated or non-pirated. Uh, now, I, <laughs> Don't I will pirate say, Windows though. They, uh, they've done a good job. Yes. Yes. They have definitely done a good job. And you know, honestly, like most of my friends, it, 
whenever you buy a new computer, obviously you pay the 140 bucks and you just get it new installed right from the you know right from the OEM. But uh, man, Windows has done it. And well, actually, let's let's just broaden that and say before the show we were giving kudos to Microsoft uh, in private and just say in public. Uh, what were the words you said? There's a reason why they're now worth more than Apple. Uh, Microsoft has been well, um, doing okay. Yo, we were talking about Exchange emails and everything, mm-hmm. and I got to give them credit. Um, they're solid. Like they do a good job. And uh, that, I mean, they both, they helped us out, you know, admittedly with Pop Zara, but I'm sure, you know, we've talked about even, I don't know what your system is, but we talked about it as an alternative for you, right. but no, but, but even um, when Windows 10 was out and they were restricting OEMs, you know, uh, licenses to OEMs, they got rid of that quickly. Like you can now transfer your, your license to another computer if you buy it. Mm-hmm. Like they've done the work, like they've done the work. They've solved these problems. Like I said, I like, Windows 11 is not perfect, but they are listening and it is getting better. Right. And as someone who's used to be an Apple fanatic too, like it's increasingly harder to look at the options available to you and justify why you can't have things the other guy gets. Like you're not a baby. Right. You're not a baby. You don't need your steak cut up for you in little yum yum bites. There's no little <laughs> airplane going to feed you din din. Like justify why I can't have two ports. Justify why I can't have a headphone jack. Justify, uh, and uh, if I could just make up one point real quick. Yeah. Side side note. Um, I thought I saw the Apple show where they were showing off. What was it called? Um, uh, that second screen feature. What's it called? Oh, uh, uh, not port or. or um, bu- 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 What's bu- it called? Bu- Stage manager or something. Yeah. And managers. We'll just call it manager. And. I was like, wow, this feature is awesome. This is a great feature for iPads. Plug it into your monitor and you can use it as a second screen. This is what people have been wanting for a long time. And, you know, you can keep your iPad still. Because I know a lot of digital artists who use their iPad as their primary device. Mm-hmm. It's great for as a primary device. I'll be honest. If you're on a Wacom tablet or an Intuos for a machine, no offense, Wacom, but the iPad is a better better fit. It's cheaper. And the, re- and the reaction time is amazing. But right. The idea that you could plug a monitor in and use it as a second screen is amazing. That's what iPad people have wanted for a long time. And okay, sure, it's limited to four four windows, okay, and you could resize it. I was like, this is great. Then you find out it's only for people with brand new iPad Pros, all that, all those expensive machines you you were told you need the power. It's artificially cut off, not because right. your machine can't handle it. But I was watching the Apple people look at this, and they are, you know jizzing themselves over how amazing <laughs> it is to use two windows, oh, four windows, and resizing. And I'm like, you do realize we've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah, A netbook could do this. You are so trained at some point to be so excited about these abridged features that everyone else already enjoys. <laughs> to, and I thought to, to myself- To be fair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, well, I mean, well, I just thought to myself, I was like, why aren't you demanding more? Yeah. Why are you so compliant? To be fair, it's not that they're amazed at what they can do. It's that they're amazed they can do it on a Mac. And I think that's what they're excited about. Not that it wasn't even a Mac. It was even a Mac. It was an iPad. Like Uh, Macs could have been able to do this. Yeah. But it's like, but like, but the worst part about it isn't the fact that you could do this on an iPad. I think that's great. Is the fact you've been, they've been evangelizing these overpriced iPad pros that Apple's been bragging, even with, even the ones with the M1 chip. Like, oh, it's so great. But now they're like, you're telling me that super chip that outclasses a, outclasses Intel desktops can't run four windows? Seriously? Yeah. Like, at some point, come on, man. At some point, you know, cut the cord they, they, and just ask. They've been trained that, you know, the tablet can do one thing at a time, that kind of thing. So the fact that it can do more. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Nathan, we <laughs> have a couple of stories. We're going to, uh, we're going to do these pretty fast because I, you know, just want to get them out there for everyone's sure. reaction. And of course your reaction. Uh, the first one though, was the Japanese city worker that I uh, alluded to earlier. Did you hear about the story? This might be my favorite I, story. I of did the day. hear this story. I did hear this story and I thought it was interesting. Um, and I did uh, admit, I got this story, story confused with another story coming out of Japan where a worker, uh, was running a 7-Eleven and he's being sued by the Japanese government over not letting the 7-Eleven be open 24 hours. I did but, not hear that one, but yeah. But I hear but I hear stories about this all the time about all the, like, uh, whenever you hear a hack about a financial institution or a medical institution, nobody hacked nothing. Somebody took, lost a laptop in a, in a bar. <laughs> Social like, engineering is still hacking to some level. Yeah, like that's, yeah, that's not hacking. Like mm-hmm. somebody l- lost it. Or you can't see me doing the so, air quotes. Lost it for a check. Right. 
so 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 the reason why why this story tickles me so much i was just talking um you know this morning about it is the fact that this gentleman uh went out there uh he he's a contractor for for a worker and they were looking at benefits for households uh you know how many people are in a household how much government assistance do they get that kind of thing that was his job and he was going to go do it so he was moving cities or states or something like that he was traveling uploaded 460,000 residents of Japan onto this USB in different prefe- <laughs> uh, uh, prefe- prefectures. Uh, I'm sure Nathan yes. can um, you know, talk more about how Japan is set up, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, Nobody loaded knows. them onto two USBs and then uh, put them in his bag. And on his way there, he went out, Nathan, and got drunk. He got blackout drunk, was hanging out in a bar, woke up in a gutter, and lost his bag sometime during the blackout and had to go to police and say, hey, there's half a million people's dates of birth, addresses, names, first name, last name, phone number, all personally identifiable information, as well as their income and things like that. So they, so like the government, and only in Japan can the government put out and say, there's something very sensitive and very valuable out there. Uh, everyone, if you can keep an eye out for it, we really want that back. And it worked. They the the cops yep. were able to find it uh, in front of an apartment building close by. Uh, Nathan, and I, I know that Pop Zara has covered this, but this sounds like a side quest in like uh, Yakuza, like a dragon. Yakuza. Yeah, well, it. it it's it sounds like you know you you stumble across this guy just woke up in a gutter maybe you know maybe he's naked or something like that and you're like oh man you gotta help me I got blackout drunk yesterday with these fine women gotta and figure, now gotta I can't find clues. my bag help me find my bag you know stuff like that it does but but again though I mean anybody will laugh at this because Japan Japan unfairly has been sort of maligned as this um, peaceful wonderland because of stories like this. Mm -hmm. But it's true, though. You talk to anybody who's been over there. You talk to anybody who knows anything about Japan. And the country is different than most other countries. The fact is their crime rate is low for a reason. Not because crimes don't happen. Because people turn people in. Like, there's an honor system that exists. It's socially unacceptable. It's socially unacceptable to commit certain kind of crimes. Yeah. Well, in China, for example, you have the um, the social credit system where you, you literally sh- shame your neighbors. Oh, you jaywalked. Oh, damn you. Mm-hmm. In Japan, it's the harmonious nature of the country. It's like you shouldn't do that because it ruins it for other people. But you don't need the government on your back. This is just the Japanese nature for the most part. And you go there and it's there's there's a lot of the stereotypes are true. And, anybody, and Gaijin will tell you this if they go there. Have I been there myself? No. But I will say this. Um, pe- there's stories, millions of stories about people leaving bicycles outside, not mm-hmm. locked up. People don't need to lock certain doors up because there's just, there's just not that level of malfeasance out there. Right. And you contrast that to like the United States, for example. I mean, every single day, there's, and you could watch 24 hours a day, the footage of people being robbed and attacked if, and if whatever. If you told someone in, in the U.S., um, you don't have to lock your front door. The U.S. would go, are you insane? I don't want to die tonight. You know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But as far as this goes, this sounds like another heartwarming thing, but it, it does lead me to still question why he was able to take someone's private, people's private information on well, a USB stick. Well, uh, they said that, I uh, obviously, again, he was traveling from one, you know, from one place to another, and it was his job as a contractor. Uh, he mishandled private information. He messed up, but he also messed up by getting drunk and losing it. That was probably the bigger problem in all of this, so just yeah, seems like it it's crazy. not point to point though we're talking about encryption like you're being able to put things on a on a pin drive to transport but the fact that you're transporting outside means your chances of losing it, especially if you're blackout drunk in a bar <laughs> good what type of salary man is this guy yeah getting blackout yeah. drunk hold yep. your liquor get some friends <laughs> there you go so with that one i also wanted to bring up um let's see actually i i, I was gonna bring up this whole nothing phone thing uh i think uh, we talked about it once before nathan mark my words the nothing phone is all paid advertising. There's absolutely. I, ugh. I care, I'm just so curious about this stuff, though. It's like I hear about this. Like, why bother? Why bother at a certain point? Like, what's the, what's to gain? Like, you you what's the, I mean, maybe I'm not maybe maybe I'm answering my own question. This person is going to collect a lot of um funding they're going mm-hmm. to create a phone that was, that's probably pennies on the dollar to could you know to produce um it's got an interesting idea that i don't even think is coming to the united states i don't think we're getting the transparent version no. and 
But at the end of the day, what distinguishes this thing for, from a million other Android phones? And I think there's one thing that I do want to say this as someone with deteriorating eyesight, like I was using my iPhone the other day and I have bias lights on my desktop yeah. and on my TVs. Mm-hmm. When you look at a phone in the dark, you're, that thing's blazing right into right. your redness. And, and people will tell you, every doctor will say, it does not going to hurt your eyes. Bull crap. It hurts your <laughs> eyes. It does. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Nicotine is addictive and tobacco is bad. But I'll say this. I think the Nothing Phone has an option where you can put backlights on. And I thought to myself, that's interesting because that does help. That is in line with my thinking about how you should be looking at electronics. There should be some ambiance beyond there. It helps your eyes. W- would and, be nice. um, would be nice. Yeah. But other than that, I don't, I don't see the reason. Yeah, it, it does the whole thing. So anyways, uh, I, I was not going to bring that one up. Let's see. So the next one I, I was going to bring up, uh, Steam Summer Sale, just heading into the weekend. I know that a lot of people kind of wait all year to load up on games that they're not going to play for you know for the whole year. Uh, the Steam Summer Sale 2022 is going on. So uh, I know that... A, 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 yeah, yeah. So I, I know that a couple games on my list uh, are you know, like 80, 90% off. So just want to you know give everyone a heads up that if you didn't know... The, stu- the summer sale is going on. so It's here. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool. So, oh, oh, actually, I did not know Hades is 40% off. Neat. I've been actually waiting for that game. Hades, so. Hades is one of those games that if you can get it, grab it. It's, on, it's available on everything. Everybody loves it. I played it myself. It's not my type of genre, but I played enough of it to recommend it. I know... Right. Um, I, like half of our gaming crew, it was their favorite game of the year. So, oh yeah, oh it it, it won every award the year it came out. It, it like last year, it, it won like everything. Won awards. Some people may have actually played it. <laughs> no can I, kidding. Can I give it? Can I can mm-hmm. I give a PSA for a game not to buy? Sure. Do not buy Knights of the Old Republic two on the Switch. Don't really? buy it because you can't beat it. Uh, the game came out broken. Uh, didn't know this at all until until it came out. So game came out, got great reviews. Look at that, great reviews. Then it came out, the game is unbeatable. Well, and it looks like uh, Kotaku pro- found a way to cheat your way around whatever game breaking bug it was. So uh, the developer like, posted an immediate that, solution. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the developer the developer acknowledged it, but the fact of the matter is, uh, a lot of those reviewers that gave this game a good review have some. I have some questions for you. As a Let's as an editor, it. I have it, it, it is a running joke in our industry, Nathan, that reviewers mm. of games either A, don't play them, or B, play them for about an hour on the lowest and easiest difficulty, well, and, and, and they suck at games. That, that's the thing. I was, talking to, I was talking to our buddy Corey the other day. We did a podcast. Um, if you want to mention it, you can, where we cover the NPD uh, numbers. We were going to end all that with the state okay. of gaming for June. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, I will say this, though. On that podcast episode, we, we specifically addressed the future of gaming journalism in the fact that websites like ours, in some respect, are kind of obsolete, that people don't like just sitting down and reading something anymore. I mean, I'm sure some people do. And as much as I may detest the, the process, there's something to be said about streaming. There's something to be said about influencers and Twitchers, because at least you see them playing the game. At least mm-hmm. they're playing it, good or bad. And how many examples do we need of, of uh, people who write reviews, especially for websites like GameSpot or IGN, when you actually look at them play the game, they can't play it. They don't know how to play. So right. you have to question yourself, what the hell were they reviewing? If they can't play the game, what were they reviewing? And the answer you don't want to know is that they didn't play it. Yeah. And they're, they're basing their review. It's like that AI that's going around, not the Dolly Mini with the crazy images, which I think I sent you, that AI uh, compiler that can write journalism based on the style. Well, that's yeah. really what's happening. You can, and I hate to break this to you, you can do this. You can go there, uh, a critic, if you're a freelance gaming journalist, you, you, all you got to do is look at reviews on Metacritic and you just look at the keywords and you could literally create a review out of nothing, sell it and get some money for it. And if you do that, shame on you. And if you do that, give me some. But <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, is there so much, I don't want to call it corruption. It's just journalistic laziness. And, and there's nobody cracking the whip because there's no offices. Nobody has to report to the boss. The boss is too lazy to check your work. There, there, it's, just, it's how it's going to happen. There's also no, uh, you know, there's no news. Well, not that there's no news cycle. It's just that it revolves so fast. Like, you know, if you came out with an Elden Ring review, like if you played Elden Ring for a week and then came out with your review, every you know, like it doesn't matter. The, the people were already playing it. They were either going to play it or they weren't. They didn't really care about your week old review. Uh, you know, they wanted it the day before or the day of that it just came out. And, you know, that doesn't work. But 
that's what people want. They want those. It, they want those big Metacritic aggregate. You know, the Rotten Tomato aggregators. It does. They don't want it, the individual. It only review. works so far, though. It only works so far because there's only a percentage of the quote, quote unquote gaming community that's actually profitable. The gaming industry itself is not very profitable with gamers. Mm -hmm. That's why they need new butt. That's why you can Unless sell Call of Duty two days to vote. Unless you're <laughs> Unless you're yeah. Well, then you could do whatever you want anytime. <laughs> but no. But what I mean though is that. It's it's the non cat it's the more casual people. That's why you have this allure because you simply cannot sustain an industry based on two million people. It has to be twenty. It has to be thirty. You have to bring those people in. So a game like you mentioned, the Steam sale games you missed. Um, the vast majority of games sell after they're released because they have to float down there. Uh, we talked about Elden Ring, both of us, and being a phenomenon. That's that's a phenomenon. That doesn't happen. Like the when a game stays in the top ten for more than two months, that's amazing. Yeah, and that almost never happens because it has to be word of mouth. Well, we but, can you know, you, uh, transition here just a little bit, Nathan, if you don't mind. Um, you know, just give some some other little insights into the state of gaming. June twenty twenty two. You uh, you and your team put together this podcast every single month of just you know just good games that came out, what's going on trend wise, and that stuff like that. So everything that we've been talking about and more. Um, yeah, how 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 did your recording go? Well. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like putting a negative spin on the fr on the front page. Um, by all accounts, Diablo Immortal is a kind of a dud. It doesn't mean they can't fix it, but it, apparently nobody really likes it. And even our own staff doesn't like it. But it is the most talked about game of the month, so it gets the top billing. Um, again, we, these aren't necessarily games we review or have reviewed or will review. It's just that uh, what Corey and I do is we take us we take a slice of what people are talking about. Then we look at the hard numbers of what sold last month, and then we just sort of have a little fun talking about everything else. So it's not mm -hmm. really necessarily an opinion about what the games are. It's just that these are the ones you've probably heard about. And mm -hmm. I'm looking at two of these games in this list: Diablo Immortal and Sonic Origins, and I see developers and publishers who sort of crap the bed, and they. They didn't do their job. They released garbage. And that's, that's I, for example, the Sonic Origins hurts because how do you screw up 30-year-old games that you had <laughs> nothing to do with? You repack it. It's like taking a fossil and putting an old wrapping paper. You, you screw up a sure thing. There have been a thousand of these Sonic collections. All you had to do was just release another one. You would have been fine. But you have to infiltrate it just like Diablo with DLC with microtransactions, with you, you pervert the system. Sega, you just had Sonic 2 make $400 million. You have goodwill. And then yeah. you pooped it away. And I was like, and if you're a Sonic fan out there, remember something about Sega. That everyone's, everybody, every 10 years, you get a good Sonic game. Maybe every five years, you get a decent Sonic game. And it makes you forget that 99% of what this company does is crap. <laughs> so don't forget that ratio. It's like Keanu Reeves movies. Every five years, Keanu comes out with a really good movie and you forget that most of his movies are crap. And you're like, oh, yeah. we forgive you, Keanu, because we really like John Wick. Oh, wait, You're what's that fishing movie? Nobody cares. So... <laughs> Okay, so so there you go, um, and everyone, uh, once again, the show notes, where I have a link to that, as well as everything that we talk about, but we have a couple more topics, and then we'll, we're going to wrap it up for the weekend. Uh, Nathan, let's jump over to this story that I did not cover, but sounds very oh. spooky, though, you know, we, we've touched on this idea that thanks oh, to no. technology, we have the ability to essentially resurrect the dead. We can keep people, you know, uh, I, I think the last time we had this conversation, Nathan, was with uh, Stan Lee after he passed, obviously. Yeah. And his cameos in Marvel movies, what should be the future of Stan Lee? Should they keep putting him in Marvel movies as an Easter egg? Would, you know, resurrecting him and making him do and say things he never actually said or did, would that be disrespectful? So, little things like that. Con this conversation is going to keep coming up and now it has to do with well amazon this was this is like the worst example i've ever seen like i don't think anybody liked this like i think everybody who saw this thought what the hell were they doing that they could just use a snippet of a voice and they can use that to like use ai to recreate the whole voice right. um but before we get into this leading into another um another story we're going to be talking about streaming stuff like obi-wan i was i was watching obi-wan and i was like is that James Earl Jones? And I looked into it, and it's not. It's an AI bot that Disney uses compiling his voice to make hating Christians and say whatever James Earl Jones would have said. Hmm. It doesn't sound right. And then I go back to the Amazon thing. I'm like, wow, you can put your dead grandmother to work. Because what's, what is Alexa? Alexa is not your family friend. Alexa is a service bot. 
Right. So you're going to honor your grandmother, your dead grandmother's memory by having her order you toilet paper. I mean, you that, know what? That, that was no. <laughs> Grandma, turn the TV down. That, that is a way what? to. That is a way to kind of uh, phrase it. But I, I, I mean, when, uh, I remember talking about Alexa went or wow, she's actually in the room. I can't say her name. Uh, well, I remember talking about this digital assistant when it was first coming out, and that was why they gave her a voice, and it was you know, uh, it, and that's why it was the way it was. They wanted it to sound more human, more natural, so that you would develop an attachment to it, and you would be more likely to. To, you know, almost see, not like see it as a friend, but you know, you would feel some kind of connection to it because Amazon is a soulless, heartless company. And, you know, there needs to be some kind of connection there that the human can attach to. Well, um, I don't mind soulless. I mean, when I'm ordering something, I want soulless. I don't want to have true. a conversation with the computer. I want take money, give product, take money, give product. I, I, all I was trying to allude to was that. This is the end result. It's that you know, oh. it's one. It, it, it's one thing to make yeah. uh, someone you know, like like a digital assistant that you know you might enjoy using. It's another thing to say that's my mother, and you know I can have a conversation. My mother oh. can tell me a joke. You know, stuff like that. I have a, I have a very horrible thing to say, but see on your screen right now it says this is not Val Kilmer's voice from Top Gun. It wasn't. Right. In like they literally write his disability into the show, into the movie where he has to type on a machine, but then the big emotional part is he gets up and talks to Tom Cruise and everyone's, oh, everyone's crying, right? Mm-hmm. But that's not his voice. It's the same as James Earl Jones. It's not his voice. It's an AI bot. They, and there was a guy who found out a couple of years ago that his mother, who donated her body to science, did you hear about this story? This is kind of hilarious. He found out that the body, his mother's body, which he thought was donated to science, went into weapons testing and they attached it to a yes. bomb and they blew it up yes, and he was they blew upset up grandma. I, yeah they blew up grandma but i was like but that's what she signed up for did she think she was going to be on a table and carrying cancer like there's other things with science other than cancer yeah. and so so when your mother so if, her, if if you record your mother oh god what was that thing then years ago they would have um cards that you could record on greeting cards, you could record mm-hmm. a message. Yeah, 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 or, yeah. Like birthday cards and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and you know you could send it off. And or um, what was the other thing? Um, there was a story years and years ago about a guy who said it might be a myth, but I think it's true. A guy who was moving and he found his old Nintendo sixty four that he used to play Mario Kart with his dad. Oh yeah, yeah, and, and, and this was and like then, fifteen and years the later. The ghost image and the race and the the yeah. ghost image. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a heartwarming story. That's mm-hmm. a nice heartwarming story. This Amazon story is cold as hell. Yes. Like this, this, anybody thinking that you can put your dead relatives in service, it doesn't have to be a relative. What if it's a girl? What if you broke up with a girl and you now enslaved her voice to your, your Alexa? Like there's so many things you can do. Um, but no, uh, I was going to say, we didn't talk about this. We talked about streaming stuff, but there's um, a South Park movie that came out this year on Paramount, one of their movies. And a main plot point is that in the future, Alexa would have developed so much you could marry her. And go out with her, date her, but she'd still sell you products at the same time. Um, there's a new Beavis and Butthead movie on Paramount Plus. Mm-hmm. A main plot point is that Beavis falls in love with Siri because he thinks Siri's a girl. It's you know, it's, technology has a way of acting acting funny on the stupid and the gullible. Right, and and, um, uh, and, and, and just real quick, uh, Alexa, stop. Yeah, so I don't know what you said, but that made her start going exactly. off. Exactly, so, did I upset? So, but I'll just so say this. I, I'm wondering if anyone else out there, if I just fix their problem, just like I fixed my problem. But but yeah, Alexa, terminate. <laughs> no, but uh, order toilet paper, twenty rolls. But I don't know. <laughs> that, I just that look at this story works, and so you I be careful. <laughs> I just look at this story though, Ben. I'm like, I don't understand the thought process behind this. Like, I just the thought is, I we just want to. So I want to know. We can, so we I, should. Well, Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, he warned us about this 30 years ago. Just, you know, we always thought we could, doesn't matter. Yeah, and now look at this. Now we have like Jurassic Park 17, the rise of Chris Pratt again. Uh, Exactly. And it's terrible. Stop it. (laughs) Stop making clones. Yeah. So, okay. Grandmother's voice alone. It's exactly so there's that story let's go ahead jump over to one more and then uh we'll kind of wrap it up here but uh you also have this other one speaking of things technology can do this one less creepy maybe more fun for everyone out there uh ar meets ml ikea 
which is uh, ML IKEA, which I think is the name of the app, mm-hmm. lets you erase and, re- and replace furniture in your home. And I know that. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, almost like, uh, I think Home Depot and Lowe's have kind of had this where you take a picture of like a room and you can replace the floor. But this is mm-hmm. now actually removing furniture and then the AI well, can kind of put what's behind the furniture and then you fill it and then you fill the room again. Yeah. You Well, you have Amazon app on your phone? Uh, maybe. Take anybody listening. You take your phone out if it's a newer phone. Go mm-hmm. to Amazon, get the app, not the website, and go look at a desk or a bookcase. And there's an option where you can do VR. You could do AR, where you can actually like use your phone oh, and you can literally move your. You I can move the furniture. They've had this for a while. I'm sorry. I'm such a luddite. I have an iPhone 11, so I'm not okay. the one of those cool people that can do this. But the iPhone 12 and no, you no, can. you could do this. You could do you could do this on an iPhone 6. And so what oh. it does, it, it in the app, it just uses a 3D model, and you could move the model up and down, and you can literally look in your phone and walk around your room. That's how I bought my desk. My desk, hmm. I want to see if my desk would fit. Right, you could look underneath it. It's space age cool technology, and it's not new. What the IKEA one is doing, IKEA is using AI to erase the current furniture you have, so you can say, well, what would it look like here? Right. But I use the Amazon one all the time for furniture. It's actually quite useful. Uh, I actually used it to buy some rugs. But no, the um, this is technology. I've, I've said it before to you, and I said again, AR is much more useful than VR because VR requires you to have 100% immersion. AR requires you to have 10% immersion. Like you put your phone in front of something, you can see it. It's like, you know, as long as you put your phone in front of something, you don't see like a ghost, then you're doing pretty good. I, 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 still, well, love hi, the fact that, I still love the <laughs> fact that this transformative technology is mm-hmm. going to be forever linked in at least for a generation is going to be forever linked to Pokemon Go. That will be, yep. you know, forever the touchstone that brought us AI uh, brought us works. AR to the mass uh, to the masses. It's cuddly. It's yeah. Pikachu. Like you have to have an ambassador. Like I've always we when I used to talk about gaming a long time ago with people, I always talked about the ambassadorship of video games. For example, um you have Mario, you have mm-hmm. Pac-Man, you have Final Fantasy, you have um you have DVD, you have Blu-ray. A lot of these technologies start off with video games because they create the bridge to make technology more accessible. I, we take for granted what a video game controller is, but only because we've been trained on Mario or we, we get trained on flight sticks. But most people have never flown, flown a jet, but they probably played Flight Simulator. You know, you right. can race a car on a video game now. It's like Speaking, they do make they make yeah, it more familiar to you. Definitely, and and, and really gamifying and education um, to your point mm-hmm. have 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 you know uh, become more and more of a thing that people have found engage engagement leads to learning, and you know, video games do that very very well. So I do want to say one more thing, and then we're gonna end on the fact that there was no. Strict E3, and I'll be honest, um, you know, I was kind of out of the loop, and then I was like, oh, there's a Bethesda Microsoft keynote. Oh, there's a Sony keynote. Oh, Forgot there's a about Nintendo it, didn't keynote. You? Yeah, it, you know, yeah. when there was when there's not one event to kind of tick off on your calendar, uh, you start realizing it's like, what's up with all these keynotes? What did you think about a non-E3 game expo? Because it seems like everyone still wanted to have their, you know, their showtime. And like, uh, Nathan... Did they coordinate with themselves, like among themselves? Like, oh, you know, well, yeah, Wednesday. You I blame. Well, I blame. I blame. Uh, e, uh, who's the parent company of E3? Is it the? Um, I forget mm-hmm. who they are, but I blame them because they canceled E3 six months ago, back when we were in the middle of a COVID surge. So mm-hmm. that was their excuse. It's like, well, they kind of crapped the bed on that because we're pretty much back to normal now. Let's be honest, we are. And anybody who pretty much says we aren't, those are fighting words. We're back to normal. <laughs> Let it go. People have suffered enough quit it. So, but they could have easily had an E3, but I think there's a larger picture is that the E3 show itself has become irrelevant only because it's been replaced. Kind of like when you see Apple and Apple used to have that famous show where jobs would come out. He'd do his thing. Oh, one more thing. And now everybody copied it. Everybody's got their own show. Now that did not make CES um, obsolete in the way gaming shows and direct streaming thing have made E3 obsolete. They, it costs a lot of money. And it costs a lot of money for big publishers, small publishers. If you've ever mm-hmm. been to E3, you know what I'm talking about. It is monopolized by like three different big companies. And the small publishers who spend a fortune to be there are relegated to ghettos, like literally like a, a booth, not mm-hmm. even a booth, like a, like, a, like a cubicle in a Dilbert comic. And, you know, you, you go in there on the first day as, a pre- as press, there's already stickers 
on things that said best in show nominee because right. you're not the press that's going to promote it. So anyway, going forward, though, um, we did just fine without E3 because publishers are learning that they can use the power of streaming to get their games across. Yep. The reason, we, the only reason we cor uh, corrugate around June is because that's where the date used to be and because everybody sort of expects gaming news around then. And so uh, because if, if most major media is going to pay attention to your Sonic game, then I might as well show you my scissor game or my racing game or whatever, because they're already interested. So I can get right. a little publicity out. You know, the, they're already there. You know, while you're here, can I show you this? And that's, right. it's just legacy, but there's no reason. F I mean, Nintendo does what tree houses four times a year. <laughs> you don't need to do it in June, but it, it benefits smaller publishers more than it benefits bigger publishers. You mentioned Microsoft and Bethesda. They showed a lot of stuff, but they didn't really show anything because almost nothing's really coming out. But they did put out a show, and I thought that was... They did uh, put out a show. They did yeah. put out a show. And Sony um, Sony didn't put out a show, but Sony sort of um, merged with Jeff Keighley's... Uh, I forget what it's called. I think I mentioned it on the podcast. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you, have a, if you have the podcast up there. He has his little show every year. There's a lot of Sony stuff shown there. Um, what is it called? Uh, it's at the bottom. 93 MPD near the bottom. Everything else. E3, doo -doo, Microsoft Bethesda, Summer Game Fest Live. Summer Game Fest. Um, there you go. Yeah. Like that's where Sony showed off a lot of their Last of Us this and this and that. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? It's, I'm not going to lie to you. It's kind of fun. Like I don't have to spend all year. I could just see everything in like in a bit. And that's what E3 used to be. E3 was three days. You got everything you needed to know. You didn't get a lot, but you got a little bit and you got excited about things. They showed you trailers that were probably fake. They showed you games that may never come out, but everyone was kind of into it. You kind of had that vibe. You get to talk about it, water cooler mm -hmm. stuff. And I kind of missed that a little bit, but I don't miss the BS. I yeah. don't miss that. And it made people fight. And I don't like that. <laughs> well, we're not going to fight anymore because, uh, Nathan, we're about done for the day. So, uh, everyone out there, if you want to find out more, ComputerAmerica.com, we'll have it in the show notes. And, of course, PopZara.com. You can just head straight there and find uh, everything from uh, a lot of movie reviews. You guys have been uh, sitting around a lot. Um, I, I appreciate that. Hey. <laughs> But no, a lot uh, of stuff to watch. Yeah, exactly. So, so movies. You can find video games. You can find, uh, of course, you have um, the BenQ monitor up there. Uh, you know, 4K true, all that good stuff. So, yeah, all that and more. And I know that your team over there at Popstar is, you know, always does amazing work. And even if there's not an E3 to cover, uh, yeah, you guys still have a good covering of what's been talked about lately. So, everyone, let's. Uh, hit that button and yeah we're about done for the day so thank you so much for tuning into the program be sure to catch us here next week 4 to 5 p.m as well and on top of that hey uh every single friday we have uh many correspondents and uh yeah nathan thank you so much for joining us all right guys have a good weekend bye-bye um, have a good one everyone and we'll catch you next time until next time bye-bye